You don't need to do this. Do what? Ask me questions about him. I'm interested. I get that you're okay with it. You don't need to demonstrate it all the time. Wow. Sorry. No, do you know what? I'm sorry. It's not been the best day, has it? You really know how to sweet talk someone, don't you? Oh, come on. Who will be kidding? Do you normally give out feedback at the end of the date? Not normally, no. It's you who responded to my message. I kind of thought that you might have been interested. Oh, that's the issue with meeting people online, isn't it? Eventually you have to meet me in person. Well, go on. What? Let's hear it. Let's hear what? Well, this clearly isn't going anywhere, is it? So I might as well get something from it. Where did I go wrong? You really want to have this conversation? Well, why not? Well, normally if someone's not interested, they just give you some bullshit. But here I am with someone who went out on a date with me and genuinely had a rubbish time and is prepared to give me honest, unadulterated feedback. I'd be a fool to say no. You're boring. You you don't realise it, but you are. I think that's what made this evening even more tedious. You thinking your stories were interesting when actually they weren't. None of them. The one where someone slapped you was okay but only because it was about me getting slapped. Yes, I could really identify with that one. What about getting stuck on the roller coaster at Disneyland? Didn't feel it, sorry. Okay, you see, this is a problem because that's kind of my set piece. It's like my flagship story, and I've told that on a lot of dates. Well, that probably explains why you go on so many dates. Thanks. And then you've got sweat patches. You could see them. The International Space Station could see them. Fuck. Even the waiters were commenting on them. Oh, no. Have they... No, oh, they're still there. No, oh, I'm going to die alone. And that film that you were talking about, it's called A Buddha Souffle, not About the Souffle. Really? Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. I've been calling it that for years. I imagine you have, yes. <sighs> what are you doing? Taking notes. Aren't you offended? No. Well, this is helpful. I mean, carry on if, I mean, if you don't mind. Fine by me. So I think as a general note, I'd say if you're trying to get someone to like you, don't talk so much. Less is definitely more. And then drilling down to specifics, if you ask someone if they've seen Top Gun and that person replies no, they probably don't want you to recite the first 10 minutes with accents. I thought I was being cute. I could tell that. I'm going to die alone. You don't need to imply that your friend is black by referring to them as a dude, or equally that someone is gay by saying they're lovely. You don't need to outline the difference in content between American Netflix and UK Netflix, however interesting or unjust those differences may feel to you. And you don't need to overcompensate by being excruciatingly nice to the waiter. And you really don't at any point have to ask me about my dead partner every five seconds. Uh, Now, there, I think you're being a bit mean. I'm really not, I promise you. Your dead partner doesn't make you attractive to me. And for the record, okay? So yeah, maybe my contribution to the date wasn't overwhelming, but this date was a fucking car crash and I can't take full responsibility for that. So I'm to blame. You have to give something back. You hardly said two words. No wonder I'm fucking sweating. It was like a job interview. I may be boring, but for the record, I performed far worse than that on a date and still got laid. So the problem must lie with you. I'm funny and interesting. And sweaty. Yes, yes, I'm fucking sweaty because it's stressful. When you want someone to like you and you don't feel brilliant about yourself and you're kind of tired of being on your own, there's a certain amount at stake, not to mention the financial outlay of going to Wagamama. So yeah, you're goddamn right I'm sweaty. I'm not quite sure you're ready to date again. But I can handle that you don't like me or that you think my stories are boring, which they aren't actually. My stories are often very well received. I can handle all that. What I can't handle is being brought out on false pretenses. Really? No. I'd like my money back, please. What the hell? I came on this date in good faith. I was led to believe that there was a realistic chance that it might go somewhere when there was, in fact, no chance whatsoever. And as I am able to prove that it's through no doing on my part and the fault lies entirely at your door, I don't see why I should pay a financial penalty for this evening's punishment. We split the bill, if I remember, so I'd like my £18 back, please. I'm not sure if you're even joking right now. Have you never heard of the Trades Description Act? 
You've made your point. Okay. Okay, what? Okay, I'm sorry. 18 pounds. I don't have any cash on me. Yes, you do. How do you know? You paid for the meal on your card and I gave you my share in cash. Shit. Yes, you are. That's sorted then. Who turns up on a date with no cash anyway? Fine. Thank you. What about the change? What about it? It was 18 each. I've given you a £20 note. You don't get change when you call me boring. Were you like this to your partner? He wasn't my partner at the end. How wasn't he? I dumped him. Ah. Sorry. I assumed that you were together at the end. Nope. Was it... Sorry, it's, it's none of my business. Go on. No. Just being nosy. I was only asking those questions to show... That you're okay with it. Well, some people might be put off, actually. Why? A dead partner is a lot to live up to. What do you mean you dumped him? I was angry with him, so I dumped him. I brought him back from the hospice as it was his last few days and I was livid with him. Raging I was for some reason, I can't remember why, and so I dumped him. He was in and out of consciousness, so I don't know if he actually hurt me. Maybe he didn't? No, but maybe he did. We'll never know. And actually, I have to live with that. I have to live with the fact that I was with a man I so thoroughly didn't deserve. And right at the end, I betrayed him. And I'm not one to over-dramatise, but I think we can safely say that that was the time when he probably needed me most. If he didn't hear you... He died very suddenly. I thought we had a few more days as he was drifting in and out. And yeah, so I, I dumped him, then I went for a piss, and when I came back, he died. Maybe he wasn't aware of what you said? It would be lovely to have that to cling on to. Are you sure he heard you? I'm not sure, no. But I can't just pretend that he didn't, even I'm not that stupid. And then when I called the ambulance, I went outside to guide them in and the door slammed shut behind me, so I was locked out. I broke it down eventually, but there was a good seven or eight minutes where he was dead inside on his own and I couldn't be with him. And we knew it was coming. He planned it so fucking meticulously. <laughs> Basically, I... But sorry, we were talking about you. I like the picture of you on the beach. You looked like fun. But not so fun in person. Not so far, no. You can keep the change. <laughs>